Notice that these two both have a weight of 174, right? Because this is 79 and 81, and this is 81 and 79. Oh, yeah. Now let's figure out what the, so what the relative abundance of these are going to be. Well, what's the chances that this is going to be bromine 79? Well, there's a 0.5 chance that this will be bromine 79, and a 0.5 chance that this will be bromine 79. So do you know what's the chance, how do we figure out the total probability that these will both be bromine 79? We multiply. We don't add them, we multiply. 0.5 times 0.5, which would give us a 0.25% chance 25% chance that they're both bromine 79. Now there's again a 0.5 chance of bromine 79 or bromine 81. So what's the total chance of getting a 79 and then an 81? 0.25. You can see that all of these are going to have a 0.25 chance. Mm -hmm. So what's the chance of getting an 81 and then a 79? That's also 0.25. And then there's a 0.25 chance of this. So what's the chance that we're going to have a weight of 172? Well, that's going to be a 25% chance. But what's the chance that we're going to have a weight of 174? 50%. This is what messes people up on these problems. This is the big trap because there's two different ways to get a 174. There's two different ways to get a 174, either 7981 or 8179. So we have a peak at 172, a peak at 174, and a peak at 176. And how high is the 174 relative to the other two peaks? Twice as high? Yeah, twice as high. Because it represents 50, where the others just represent 25. So for example, if this was 0.44, then this would be 0.22. So remember, we can't assume that this is really going to be 0.50 overall. But we know that whatever this is, this is going to be half as high. So if this is 0.44, this would be half as high at 0.22. OK. So the situation is more complicated if you have more than one bromine. Remember we said if you have a single bromine, you'll have two peaks of equal height. But if you have two bromines, then we have three peaks of unequal height. Well, if you see this pattern, then that's a clue that there's two bromines in the molecule. So what's the pattern? Well, if you look at the molecular ion, if you see another peak two units to the left of it, and another peak two units to the right of it, and those two little peaks are both 50% of the height of the middle peak, that pretty much tells you that there are two bromine molecules two bromine atoms in your, in your molecule. So I think there's a fairly good chance that you might have to work through this type of probability and statistics. And the way to do that is to write down all of these cases. Well, actually, I guess these would all be considered versions of the parent. These would all be considered versions of the parent. There's three different parents now. There's a parent with 279s, there's parents with 179 and 181, and there's parents with 281s. Well, because when we use the carbon 12 or carbon 13, the one with carbon 12 is the parent. Maybe I shouldn't have said it that way. Maybe I should have said that they're both the parent. One represents the parent with carbon 12, and one represents the parent with carbon 13. That might have been a slightly better way of putting it. Um, in any case, in this case, I think it's, it might be conventional with carbon-13 to call the carbon-12 one the parent because it's so much higher. But in this case, these all, are, all have significant heights. So I don't think it would be conventional to call any of these the parent. You would call all three of them represent so the parent. So 172 is um, parent with bromine 79, 174 is parent with 179, 181. That's right. The other one's 81. I think that's the best way to put it, okay. yes. In any case, if you look at the right-hand side of your spectrum and you see this type of pattern, that's indicative that you've got two bromines. Okay? All right. Well, then we have to work out what the probabilities would be for the chlorines. Would all of those have an N plus 
dot or would they have an endless one? Oh, well, all of these are radical cations. So if I was going to write them all correctly. Let's see. So uh, in this case, I think it would be conventional to just write. I think the most conventional thing would just be to label exactly what the formula is that each of these peaks so represents. Why would we write the peak is n plus 1? That's for carbon 13. Okay. The, uh, the carbon 13 peak is conventionally written as n plus 1. But when you're dealing with bromine and chlorine isotopes, I think it's more conventional just to write out the formula. Well, how about dichloromethane? Now, there, again, there's four possibilities. 35, 35, 35, 37, 37, 35, or 37, 37. So we have to start by figuring out the weight of the lightest one. Is that 84? Have you been working that out? Or? Oh, so you have to look Okay. So then how much would this one weigh? And this one also weighs 86. And the last one weighs? Um, 88. 88, good. So we're going to have peaks. 86 and 88. Now, what are these probabilities here? 0.75 which is 0.5625. 56.25%. Good. And these probabilities are? Because you're noticing that these two versions both have the same probability? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, they both have the same probability because 0.75 times 0.25 is the same as 0.25 times 0.75. And then this one would be 6.25%. I guess I've been writing them as decimals, but you've been putting them as percents. Okay, good. If you add up all these numbers, what should they add up to? So that would be a ch way to check to make sure we got that right. If you add up all the probabilities, they should add up to 100. OK. Good. So which of these should be the smallest peak? This one should be the smallest. Yeah. Now, how much higher should this one be? Well, the, the way to work that out is, what was the total probability here? I think you already worked that out. That was. 0.375. So how can we figure out the ratio of this peak to this one? Divide. Yeah, divide those. 0.375 divided by 0.0625 would give you? 0.6. 0.6? Didn't work out right. This should be bigger. That's got to be bigger than 1. 0.375 divided by 0.0625? 6. 6. 
So this one should be six times higher than this one. And then we can figure out the ratio, say, between these two. The 84 peak and the 86 peak. Nine. It's not coming out right. This is uh, less than a factor of one bigger than this, right? It should be less than twice as big. So that means this is about 50% bigger than this peak. Mm 